<clears throat> everyone. Uh, as she said, my name is Bill Hallett, and here at Wombat, I am the manager and partner channel and alliances uh, manager for Wombat Security Technologies based in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, I'm with you today to talk a little bit about the evolution and the future of security awareness training, uh, and also highlight some statistics from our recently launched 2017 Beyond the Fish report. Uh, if I do a good job and I do well today, you should have a good overview and understanding of a couple different points. Um, iSecure has asked us to uh, speak a little bit about where we see the evolution <clears throat> going from this point forward. One of those points is where security awareness educated, uh, education started. So we'll look at look back a little bit just to give you some context and where it's going from here, and then how security awareness ha has evolved and how it's continuing to evolve. Um, where we see the next phase and beyond of not only awareness education, but behavior change in your end users so they can be a vital part of your security posture, um, both at work and then when they're using technology in their personal lives, because we see those lines being uh, blurred more and more every, every day and every year. Uh, finally, uh, we'll, we'll dive into our, as I mentioned, the 2017 findings from uh, over 70 million questions that are included in the Beyond the Fish report. And uh, before we dive into those two avenues and the, uh, the report, I'd like to uh, give you a brief overview of Wombat, just so you understand a little bit where we are in the marketplace, who we are, and what we bring to the table. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, our mission at Wombat is to change end user behavior. That is a critical focus for our, our platform and our solutions. Uh, we do that by building software solutions that are custom for customers used to teach their end users to recognize and avoid cyber attacks. Our solutions assess end user behavior. They will educate the end user and then gather intelligence about how they interact with the training so that security officers continue to, can continue to strengthen end user weaknesses and reduce, uh, reduce the risk overall. Um, a little bit of a background, this approach was born out of research at Carnegie Mellon University in, in Pittsburgh, and Wombat spun out from CMU in 2008. All of our solutions today utilize this original research and approach at its core. And uh, some of, a lot of our customers, including thousands of those globally, are probably some uh, trademarks that you know both uh, uh, professionally and in your personal life as well. Um, so, why does end user uh, behavior matter? We'll talk about that uh, because companies are becoming more and more aware that along with network technology, the end user is a vital, port of, 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 a vital part of security. So let me give you a few stats to consider around that, that statement. And this is, <clears throat> this is out of our knowledge as well before we get into the report. But these are just a few, few highlight facts that I found interesting as well too. So you see the 98%. Phishing and pretexting are factors in nearly 98% of all incidents and breaches featuring social engineering. Uh, 95%, nearly all phishing attacks that led to breach uh, were followed by installation of malware. More than 90% of data breaches in 2016 could have been prevented. And this last one, I, I kind of have to admit I get a kick out, 90% of employees admit to violating policies designed to prevent security incidents. And, and I, truly, I truly believe that um, the other 10% are probably not telling the truth, probably myself included, because probably every day or every week that I can do that. Um, so let me see, are we having problems with? Yeah, I can't see. Oh, you can't see the screen. Okay, sorry about that. Let me, bear with me one sec. Uh, computers freezing up. So, if you can bear with me, I will share my screen just like this. We couldn't get it back into the uh, the conference where it was a full screen. So, hopefully, you can see that as well. Um, but where we were is just asking the questions: Why end users matter? And these were a couple of brief statistics before we get into a lot of detail too. So, just as a refresh now, since we had that pause, um, I we at Wombat myself we look at the evolution of the training now, taking two two separate paths. One is um, how the platforms now in the marketplace are integrating with end user actual behavior. So we looked in the past where there's phishing uh, templates and phishing uh, campaigns where those were proactive uh, mock-based events. Now we are to the point where we have uh, end user uh, monitoring systems, those IAM tools such as Carbon Black that will actually interact with the, with the end user. We'll talk a little bit about that in detail. And then what we see also 
is the awareness from companies to expand beyond just the phishing attacks. And we're you know, looking at that, I would ask you to consider looking at that as more of a symptom, and we'll take a look at all of the other threat vectors that will contribute into um, risk, uh, risky behaviors and exposure to your companies too. So that is really where we view those two, t those two avenues of, um, of where, where, where we see the um, evolution of training. So a quick look back <clears throat> in the past, you'll see in the left-hand side over there probably around the 1980s, um, you had um, programs that grew out of the need for compliance training and often were in the uh, form of long computer-based or slide presentations. I'm old enough to remember those. So uh, this is where a lot of people would start it, but are um, you know, probably likely not stay that long because they just weren't all that effective. Um, then as we move forward, it moves to short focused topics, but they may only be delivered once a year. And we've seen that that has not uh, proved positive for retention-based success in a, in a platform. The next phase, there's more continuous education improvement process where the program includes a, a cycle of assessments and training. Um, then the current phase adds that ability to launch training as a person is exhibiting uh, poor behavior. That's what I just spoke about, actually interacting with the, with the uh, end user's behavior, such as unsafe web browsing, et cetera. This phase is where we see the future of uh, the security awareness training. This takes it back from mock-based events such as phishing campaigns into real life day-to-day -day behavior as we see it. And, and this is not to say tools like phishing campaigns will no longer be used by any means, uh, but this will provide a complementary tool to further reinforce safe behavior by looking at the real life end user actions. Again, going from a quote, at your leisure, unquote, PowerPoint training to following a continuous training methodology of assess, educate, reinforce, and measure to the ability to launch training right at the moment of, of bad behavior. So let me um, take a little bit of look in, inside what that means. Um, <clears throat> we mentioned um, the continuous training methodology. And, and within that, uh, we look and deploy uh, the sciences of uh, adult learning, basically. And it's, um, there's a couple points on there, too. But I don't believe we need to look a lot into detail in the first phase of compliance-driven training. But let's take a look at some of this that really drive behavior. The concept of uh, learning science principles or adult learning behavior you will hear me refer to was proven uh, to be effective through research, again, back at Carnegie Mellon University. Now, this was not developed by Wombat or CMU, but applied to the platform by the professors, and that continues today as a critical part of the successful training. Um, some of those you'll see on the slide um, present concepts and procedures uh, together at the beginning to help start opening the idea up of what you're trying to train. Bite-sized lessons. Um, you know, adults learn in small portions uh, based on hour-long videos that they're, sit, uh, they're forced to watch and can multitask at the same time. It's story-based content. Um, picture yourself if you watch a movie or a play. Those things tend to stay with you a long, long, longer and you retain that, uh, that lesson or the, the, the item that comes out of that. Immediate feedback is another key piece as those uh, folks are going through their day-to-day. -day, we want to provide them with feedback <clears throat> before we launch them into the training. Um, Teachable moments is a critical piece in that as well, too. So to reinforce what has been done incorrectly, and then it reinforces it into the training. <clears throat> and then into the um, collecting the valuable data, so we can uh, more importantly assess what is going on. We're going to assess the users, educate them, reinforce that behavior, and then measure it, measure it to see how we're doing. And actually for the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for the sake of time since we lost a couple minutes. This is a bit repetitive, so I'm going to skip this slide, but you'll see if you go to um, websites, this does uh, just reinforce what I just said before, the assessment, the education piece, the reinforcement piece, and then the measurement. Um, so if I can go back to now where we talked about the two paths of evolution. We did mention monitoring um, end user behavior. and we have just launched a, uh, a, our product just called Education Triggers. And it just touched on, uh, that's one channel we see as the next, next phase of this. Um, so this actually enables security officers to provide intervention training for actual risky behaviors, along with the mock-based phishing tools. They can see what they're actually doing and, and mitigate that. It, it, and I said before, this complements a proactive training program to catch those risky behaviors that are still happening, even after training, 
um, and expands the existing security technology investments beyond just monitoring risk of behaviors to actual remediation. Um, so and that gives you an idea of, of, the, of the concept. So uh, with that being said, let's uh, launch a little bit into the, the subject at hand and the Beyond the Fish report. Again, <clears throat> complementing the uh, interaction of the end user behavior. Now this, I mentioned, is the other channel that we look as, um, as the evolution of the training to looking beyond the fish uh, into the other threat vectors. And we'll cover these by topic, how the end users are um, interacting with them, and then uh, we'll break them down a little bit by industry too. And just to paraphrase this, this is a culmination of over 70 million questions throughout our cyber awareness um, online exam, and then the way that the users are interacting with the training modules as they answer their questions. To, um, and some of these are also highlighted in the, um, the uh, end user risk result report. Uh, this is included too. So you'll see the 2017 user risk report, uh, and this is compiled from results of international third party surveys of 2,000 working adults. There were 1,000 in the US and then 1,000 in the UK, and, and, and the UK, and then revealed uh, common cybersecurity behavior in areas similar to those assessed in the beyond the, the fish data. So how are the end users doing? Um, we'll look at, um, took a look at, like I said, 70 million questions asked and answered in 10 different categories from June 2016 through May 2017. The year over year average improvement from 22% of the questions incorrect to 20% of the uh, questions incorrect is uh, it's good positive news. We looked at it as, as a movement in the right direction. Um, you know, but if you look at that for face value, maybe you think, well, two percentage points maybe not be that significant, but that represents a 10% increase in correct answers. And when you look at the volume of 70 million questions asked and answered, that's a 7 million uh, increase in more correct responses. So we look at that very favorable. Uh, that is not to say that we don't have areas of improvement. Um, and we'll take a look at this as well too. So and we also broke this down by industry where we, you'll be able to see what we're talking about for areas of improvement. Here's some further focus on some industry data. And there are, some, there are uh, this is fairly stats heavy, but I will uh, provide perspective as we go through these two. So when you look at each industry and the average number of questions incorrect across all the topics, there really isn't a large difference across the sectors when it comes to overall knowledge. Uh, I know that each industry considers themselves unique as I talk to them and, and different from others, but this data really points to the fact that uh, when it comes to cyber knowledge, the employees are really similar in their understanding across all the topics. Uh, it does alarm me and us that, that some of the worst performing industries are expected to be pr uh, protecting very sensitive data. Like you'll see on the left hand, healthcare industry, uh, some of the companies that support national defense and military operations professional services such as law firms, accounting firms, et cetera. Um, so the results uh, very much more across the industry when you get into specific topics as well. And our full report uh, provides that detail for you too. So we'll, we'll continue uh, looking, d diving a little bit further into detail too. This next slide speaks to um, the concept that I was talking about, the one, the one chain being uh, of the evolution being the end user uh, real-time monitoring. Uh, now I'd like you to consider some of the, the root causes that I was speaking about, and this is where it ties into companies really being aware of additional factors and additional exposures that can cause the, uh, the phishing attack, right? So we're looking at problems and symptoms and not understanding the root cause of these issues. Now, you know, I propose that uh, the same is true for cyber attacks. We should look beyond the fish for the root cause of the phishing attacks outlined in, in the diagram uh, above. I believe it's these unsafe behaviors um, such as those shown on the screen uh, that, that do lead to su uh, successful phishing attacks. You know, just imagine for a minute um, or your end users, uh, you or they didn't give you the cyber attacks, the attackers all the information necessary to stage a successful attack and really, you know, kind of close the front gate before they got the information that they need, such as uh, sharing login credentials to secure systems failing to lock mobile devices, um, connecting to unsecured networks, oversharing on social media, how many of us you know, do that still, uh, failing to destroy sensitive data. Um, of course, one of the most uh, popular that people focus on, and rightly so, is failing to identify phishing 
threads uh, in, uh, in mailboxes. Um, so it's, it's very important, of course, to do that, but it's often at the cost of uh, training in some of those other areas. So that's why we would recommend a much more balanced approach, typically so that you're addressing the great, uh, greatest areas of weakness as well. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's dig uh, into the research from this year's finding a little, a little bit deeper. So you'll see these, these topics covered here in the next few minutes. Average percentage of questions uh, answered incorrectly on this, on this slide. So we looked at some of those under the tree in the last slide. So protecting confidential information, that was uh, an error, error rate of 20, 26%. Uh, protecting and disposing of data securely, 25%. Incorrect, uh, phishing threats, 24%. Um, and then you know, on, all the way to the right, using social uh, media safely. Um, so I would ask you to consider this, you know, through, the pres through this presentation on this slide, you know, how are my end users, how do my end users compare to these knowledge areas, if you've thought about this or not, and, you know, do you know how well they um, would score? Part of that question is hypothetical, but if you've thought about it, if you have an idea, um, you know, there could be unidentified areas of knowledge, weakness, and therefore, you know, vulnerability in your organization. Uh, we're going to compare knowledge levels year over year as well to give you a sense of uh, whether we've seen improvement or decline in knowledge in particular categories. Uh, remember, this is a significant set of data. I've said this several times and I'll probably be redundant and say it again, but 70 million questions asked and answered. Uh, last year's set of data had uh, 20 million questions asked and answered. So there's significantly more data that we have the, the luxury of, of looking and analyzing this year. Um, but let's look at this topic area. The results are mostly, you know, exactly the same year to year on this, this one too. So, but in the next couple of slides, you'll see some, some variants. So let's look at protecting confidential information. Um, this category, these percentages represent the percentage of questions answered incorrectly. Uh, these industries perform worse than the average of 26% of questions answered incorrectly. Um, and before you kind of say in your head, well, that really doesn't matter to me because, you know, I'm not in uh, uh, those industries. Uh, they, they, they're uh, outside uh, factors that could uh, make you vulnerable. So this vulnerability could easily be overlooked. Um, you may want to consider adding training on these topics to particular departments, groups, or within your organization. So you see uh, one thing that personally jumps out to me is, is the energy sector as well, too. So how many times have we considered in the news and the media that, uh, the energy grid and sector um, could be a vulnerable piece for attacks. Um, and uh, if you look at protecting confidential information, that's one of the industries that is, is, is at the worst uh, uh, factor on this. So if we look at a couple facts throughout the organization, one of the questions users struggle with most was around the use of shared login credentials. Uh, to minimize this practice, employees should be made aware of the personal implications of allowing coworkers to assess uh, or access sensitive uh, retail and healthcare systems using these credentials. Uh, one of the next and related topics we look at is cat category showed pretty significant improvement uh, year over year with five percentage points improvement. If we look at it by industry, um, topics addressed included destruction of electronic and paper documents. Uses, uh, use of USB devices and classification of sensitive data. You can see the industries there, consumer goods, industries that struggle the most, retail, transportation, hospitality, and all the way down to energy again at 26%. Look at the next category, identifying phishing threats. I'm oh, sorry, oops. All right, this is an important topic, the one most people focus on, like we mentioned before, and their security education programs, obviously the most prolific uh, threat vector there too. Uh, this did show uh, uh, improvement this year from 28% down to 24% as well. Now, you'll see a little bit difference in, in this. Um, uh, you'll see the two graphs, and let me explain what that means as, as uh, we're looking at the identif identifying phishing threats. Um, this category focuses, as the slide says, on different indicators and ramifications of the phishing attacks. But the reason between the, uh, the two numbers, when you see the 18% versus 20%, we recommend that uh, people measure understanding of, a, of topics in two ways. 
So through knowledge-based assessments and simulated attacks, I mentioned the cyber strength tool uh, prior, but one shows knowledge of a concept and the other indicates vulnerability to attacks. So the click rate data here is from our 2017 State of the Fish report. Um, and then as you can see here, there can be significant differences in results between simulated attacks and knowledge assessments. And again, what we say by knowledge assessments is an online quiz, just yes, no, multiple choice um, with no interactive uh, interactivity between the users. It's just basically saying how much do our users know about this topic. So there can be there can be many reasons why um, someone didn't fall for a simulated attack. Perhaps they didn't even see it in their inbox. It wasn't relevant to them, et cetera. So relying on, on that data alone can be misleading at some time, at some points. Uh, but we believe that looking at knowledge assessment information as well gives a full view of the need for continued education to ensure people understand and apply knowledge. So those tools are, are available to. Uh, utilize on, on uh, mapping out your training methodologies. So identifying phishing threats. <clears throat> this topic was the most popular with our customers. More than half the assessment and training questions delivered to the end users during our reporting period were related to phishing threats. And there was even uh, an even bigger emphasis on the topics, uh, on this topic than last year. If we look at protecting uh, mobile devices and information as the next category, this is one of those uh, uh, topical areas that showed a significant decline in knowledge this year. So let's uh, look at this in a little bit more detail. I found this interesting. This category, which had uh, questions relating to unsafe mobile application and invasive permissions, saw the most significant downgrade in performance year over year. Uh, there is one uh, big bright spot and they're not noted here because they are uh, you know, did better than the average, and that industry is telecommunications. They had 14% uh, of the questions incorrect or 80%, 86% correct. Uh, we might expect them to do well in that category uh, since many of those providers are deeply involved in mobile phone network security and on selling those solutions to their, their end customers as well, too. It's more in the forefront. Uh, the industry survey conducted for our 2006 report, just 52% of organizations said they evaluate their end users' knowledge of this topic. So perhaps this is more proof of a need to diversify our training beyond just recognizing phishing attacks. And as this next slide shows, um, and I'll state the obvious, that this is you know, becoming more and more popular and it's just an a inherent part of our, our fabric as we go through our lives. You know, as the Pew uh, research shows here on the screen, uh, we're rapidly approaching actually 100% smartphone adoption rate with adults aged 18 to 49. Uh, these devices, you know, have become increasingly complex and interconnected. As evidenced in our 2017 uh, report, the end, uh, the end user risk report, users frequently blur the lines between corporate and personal computing. A continued lack of awareness and knowledge among mobile device users can negatively impact the security of business data and systems. Um, I'd ask you to consider you know, how many people across, uh, access corporate info on cell phones and then end, end up sharing them with either uh, children, friends, associates, that type of thing. So, I'd like you to consider the next topic we had in the, in the report and that being using uh, social media. This category is one of our worst performing in 2016 but did show great strides were made over the last year see dropping from 31 incorrect to 22 incorrect. If we look at it by industry, uh, this category saw <clears throat> the trend, you know, continued increase in use of uh, social media platforms around the globe. That being said, we often, uh, we often see organizations classifying social media as they look at it as outside activity for their employees. Uh, this is simply, we think, short-sighted. Uh, particularly when you consider that our 2016 report revealed that more than 75% of the organizations allow access to social networking sites and apps on business devices, just like we talked about on the mobile devices. Even those who lock down the access within the confines of corporate systems are exposed during users' off hours. It's important to acknowledge um, the risks associated with uh, poor social media habits, which can be done by raising awareness and educating end users. Um, knowledge level on the subject. So again, telecommunications, they, from mobile use, uh, they're, they're, they're well telecommunications didn't pair so well on, on social media, 36%. You can see the other uh, defense, uh, industrial base, 33%, retail, 31 
uh, transportation 29 down to hospitality at 25 percent. So 2017 user risk report revealed the following points of concern uh, with regard to social media best practices among U.S. Uh, survey participants. The one that really caught my eyes a lot as the bottom one, 43% uh, allow friends or family members to view or post to social media on those devices. But starting at the top, 71% regularly use corporate devices outside the office. 54% view or post to social media on those devices too. So even not deep diving deep into those stats, you can imagine the, um, uh, the access that could be gained by uh, folks that would have uh, ill intent on, that, on those devices. Average percent of questions answered correctly on, on, on these. Um, these are some broad uh, general topics here, working safely outside the office. Again, these are uh, some other topics that can uh, contribute to that. Uh, the first set of topical areas show brand users have stronger knowledge. So it's not all bad news, we don't think, but when you look at building safe passwords at 12% or 88% correct, those are pretty good scores, right? But this doesn't give us uh, really a pass as a way we look at it. We've seen previously strong content areas decline year over year, so we recommend making sure that key topics get covered at least once uh, during the year to keep knowledge fresh, even though if you don't have a complete deep dive into that uh, training topic that year, we, we would suggest at least touching on it to remind them. Um, so that is a, a review of those topics. I'd like you to consider a, a case study where we saw some significant events. And this goes into a little bit of a unique um, uh, approach that this, this company took. They divided it out into different sections. So their training program, uh, they segmented it into specific training approaches for uh, three different groups. They looked at the IT team and that application development and IT. They got four modules per quarter. Uh, the people handling PII or, or um, information got two modules uh, per quarter. And then the people handling healthcare information got two modules a quarter. And they you know, they, they had buy-in from senior executives and they utilized the, uh, the continuous methodology and the reinforcement. If you look down to the bottom right, average click rates went from 19.8% down to 2.1, uh, and that reflected in the, in the blue point at the bottom left there, more than 80, 89% reduction in click rates. Um, now, that's a different perspective too, because some companies might not say that 19.8% is bad on click rates. We have a multitude of different case studies where, um, you know, customers have told us they had 80, 85% click rates and they've gone down to 12%. So it's a really a matter of perspective where that customer is starting. But this was a um, unique um, case study that I wanted to share with you because of the way they deployed it. Um, so. so <clears throat> In a uh, summary and kind of wrapping things up, I know we've gone through a lot of uh, statistics, but uh, again, this is going back to the 70 million questions and responses that we had. Um, as you can see from the results uh, that we presented, end users need to be more knowledgeable in, those, in these topical areas. And again, wrapping back to our two avenues that we were asked to talk about today with the um, end user uh, behavior monitoring and then the awareness of all those other uh, topics of uh, threats out there too. So. Um, we covered protecting confidential information. We've covered protecting and disposing of data securely, uh, identifying phishing threats, which is obviously a common one, protecting mobile devices and information, uh, using social media safely. And uh, I think all the security professionals uh, probably could spend a little time or more time focusing on the potential root causes of that successful phishing attack, or at least considering those, um, and move from the root cause for, uh, to the symptoms. Um, so if we can get, or if we can all get our employees to protect uh, data in numerous ways, in addition to the phishing, uh, the less access cyber criminals will have to that information they can use to trick your employees. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, consideration, the time. I know we went through a lot of numbers. Hopefully, you've had a little perspective on that. Uh, and moving forward, uh, if we'd, uh, we'd like, uh, please contact iSecure for those reports. They're available. We have Beyond the Fish, we have uh, State of the Fish, and then the End User Risk Report. So I will uh, gladly field any questions or, or comments at this time, if anybody has from any from the field. 
Thanks, Bill. Um, I'm just going to interject real quick while people have a chance to actually type in any questions. But thank you very much for your presentation and really appreciate you sticking with us through some of these difficulties this morning. Um, so uh, everyone, please feel free to type in any questions you might have in the chat box. In the meantime, I just have a couple housekeeping pieces to go over with everyone. Um, for those of you who have joined our series in the past, we normally send out a gift pack um, of tchotchkes from all of our vendors. Um, for this series, instead, we're having a draw. We have a drawing for an Amazon gift cards. I think there's five of them. So the more uh, sessions that you join this week, the more opportunity you have to win a gift card. Also, for those who need proof of attendance for CPE credits. Please email uh, Mark Johnson at the end of the week, and um, he can send you a certificate for all the webinars you attend. Um, if you do have any inquiries regarding the topics the bill was talking about, uh, please feel free to reach out to anyone on the iSecure team, and we'll have the appropriate person follow up with you promptly. Um, if you're looking for the, the report uh, such uh, that uh, Bill was referencing and talking about in the uh, presentation, we'd be happy to send that to you. And uh, lastly, uh, we have been sending out surveys um, after our webinar series, and we haven't really gotten too many responses. And if you would, please uh, send those back out to us. But um, in the meantime, I don't see any questions here um, from anyone. Um, so I guess we'll end uh, this web, WebEx uh, this morning, this webinar uh, presentation this morning with Bill. Um, this afternoon at 2 o'clock, we have our presentation titled New Year, New Security Concerns. And that's at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we hope, hope you'll join us. Thanks very much, Bill. Appreciate your presentation and everyone for joining. Have a great morning. Thank Thanks.